What is going on Air Gunners? And today I really just want to take some time to share my experience with you with a rifle I've been shooting for almost two years now, the Daystate Wolverine R in 177 caliber. Now before I get to this beautiful rifle though, I just want to take a quick second and thank all of those new subscribers and some 400 plus subscribers who made their way over when Joe over at Cyclops Videos mentioned my channel. Thank you guys. You could not have gotten my year off to a better start than that. And if you find yourself watching this channel more and more, or if this is maybe just your second time watching, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I can't tell you how much it means to me. And of course, like everyone always says, don't forget to ring that bell. All right, back to this beautiful rifle I have in front of me, the Daystate Wolverine R. Now, as I mentioned to you, I've had this rifle for almost two years now, and it was first introduced to me by Donnie Reed, an employee over at Baker Air Guns here in Ohio, who was raving about this when it first came out. Now, rightfully so, all the attention with Daystate when this rifle came out was on the Red Wolf. And I think the Wolverine R got, just got a little bit put to the side because, the, because of how amazing that Red Wolf is. But this is a truly beautiful and consistent rifle. And I have a lot of data I wanna share with you on that. As a matter of fact, this is the very rifle that I won my first field target match with at the end of this past summer. So, uh, you know, with Donnie talking about this rifle so much, I, I had a moment of weakness and I had to find out for myself. And I did go over it to Baker Air Guns. I purchased this rifle on my own. It came right off of their shelf. There's nothing special about it. it is one just like everybody else would have an opportunity to buy. So. Again, this rifle is available in a walnut stock like you see in front of me, but it's also available in both a, in a laminate charcoal and a laminate forester, as well as standard and high power. This is standard. I have yet to shoot a high powered one, so I do not know anything about that or have any experience with it, but they're all available in 177, 22, 25, and 30 calibers. Once I got this thing home, my first trip to the range, I really knew that what Donnie had been saying about this rifle was going to be true. I can tell you the side lever on this thing is absolutely magnificent. The trigger is magnificent and the accuracy I was getting out of the box at 50 yards was remarkable. I didn't have to do anything to this rifle. Now I'll go ahead and talk about the accuracy here in a little bit, but let's talk about some of the other parts that allows it to have such great accuracy. So over the months that I've been testing this rifle, every time, like I mentioned before, I've had the consistent results. And what really brings that out is when you take this rifle and you begin to shoot it over a chronograph. Now over a chronograph, I was able to get on a 300, or excuse me, a 3,500 PSI fill, I was able to get a lot of consistent shots. And when I say a lot, I mean 235 shots on a single fill. That is more than a day's worth of shooting. Now, I don't know how many shots you're gonna get in other calibers, but this in 177, 235 shots. This is at 894 feet per second, so just under that 20 foot pound mark, so you can use this rifle for field target or plinking or whatever you want. But over that 235 shots, I was getting a standard deviation of just 4.8 feet per second, which is absolutely incredible. But what's remarkable is when I began to look at that data on the graph that you see here, and I took just the first 189 shots, it cut that standard deviation or reduced that standard deviation down to 3.5 feet per second, over 189 shots. Now, if you're not really familiar with standard deviation and what that measurement is, it tells you how much of an increase you're going to see or decrease you're going to see from shot to shot. So the smaller the standard deviation, the better. A lot of air gunners are extremely happy if they're seeing eight to nine feet per second or a standard deviation of eight to nine. And this is cutting that in half. Now, what can I attribute it to? Well, we all know, or, or maybe if you're new to the Daystate brand, the, uh, the slingshot valve that is in here 
is absolutely incredible. Matter of fact, for a long time, Dave said it resisted putting a regulator in the rifles because of how good it is. But now they've added that Huma regulator in there and it just really tightens everything up. Um, so that system in and of itself makes us a pretty special rifle, especially the mechanical side of things. We're not talking about the electronic rifles, we're talking about a truly mechanical rifle. So let's take a look at the trigger. The trigger is a two-stage trigger, match grade. And if you look at the blade of that trigger, it has a lot of adjustability side to side, as well as up and down, so you can really match uh, your finger, the pad on your finger, and how you hold the rifle to your specific preferences, uh, as well as uh, adjust the pull for your liking. So out of the box though, and that's why I'm trying to give you the out of the box perspective, I haven't adjusted anything on this gun. Um, I was shooting or I was pull, getting a trigger pull of one, or excuse me, of 11.3 ounces on average over 10 trials. So I, I pulled that trigger 10 times, I averaged it out and it was 11.3 ounces. This can be lightened up. Again, this is out of the box, but it was about perfect for what I needed in field target and uh, I didn't see a need to do that. The other nice thing about this is the stock. Now the stock, let's talk about the grip first because the grip gives you the option for that thumb up position, which when I first started shooting air guns, I didn't know anything about it. And it's really kind of grown over me or grown on me over time. And it gives you that opportunity to have that thumb up, which I feel I have more control over the rifle with. Now, if you like the traditional wrap around thumb, it does allow that as well. So it gives you the choice. There's also an ambidextrous stock with a raised uh, cheek piece here. Uh, so you can get your correct eye level with the scope. The one thing that I would like to see in this rifle in the future, if Daystate were to make some changes, is go ahead and make this an adjustable cheek piece. I think I would be willing, and a lot of you would be willing to pay just a little bit more for that. The butt stock back here is adjustable, can can't left or right, can also go up and down. And there are aftermarket parts on my rifle here for field target. You see I have the Crawford and Lip KLSC, which I reviewed uh, a while ago. And, uh, and it really just hugs that shoulder just a little bit better. But the, the stock version is great as well. And most of you are going to find that very acceptable. Also on the stock, you're gonna notice on the foregrip, some very nice stippling as well as the grip itself. Nice stippling there as well. Very sharp and very accurate. And allows you to have that control, that feeling that's not gonna slip out of your hands that, that we all love to have when we have a, a nice high-end air gun like this. Now. The Wolverine, of course, is meant to be shot with a scope on it. Doesn't have any open sights. Uh, it does come with a dovetail rail. Some of you may prefer Picatinny, but I prefer the dovetail in this case. Has the classic looks that, the, that we all remember from the Wolverine. It also allows me to easily slide that scope back and forth on the rail so I can get that eye relief dialed in just right versus on a Picatinny rail, I have to go ahead and loosen the rings around the scope and then it gives the opportunity for it to wobble left and right to move it back and forth and have to reset it. So I find this method just a little bit easier for me. You may disagree, but this is what, what I like. Uh, and I think a lot of you will also uh, if, if you uh, are shooting field target or just getting into air rifles as well. So now I've attempted to describe this rifle in all of its beauty, but I, you know, words don't do it justice. I think the pictures speak for themselves or speak louder than my words are going to do for you. And before I forget, I did want to mention also that you do have the one and a half UNF threads down here at the end. I have on mine a Donny FL Tonto. I find the shape, the size as, as, to be perfect for this setup. Um, I also find that having a moderator on the end of your gun oftentimes allows the air to be stripped away from that pellet. So it does, or it can, I won't say it does happens every time, but I have noticed improved accuracy with moderators before. And I did notice that in this case as well. So talking about improved accuracy, let's take a second and talk about how accurate this thing is. You may have watched a video I did earlier called the King Me Challenge, where I was shooting pellets off of a bench offhand at 25 yards. It's a fun video to go check out if you haven't seen it yet, but I was using this very specific rifle and for the reason because it is so accurate. So um, as I mentioned earlier also, I did win my first field target match ever. And you can see that picture here. 
And I got my good friend Eric Jones there, who is the match coordinator for the match matches down at Central Ohio Air Gunners. Uh, I was uh, pleased to have him hand me my certificate that said that I won and uh, quite shocked that I won as well. I'm a good shot, but there's always better people out there, it seems like. So accuracy, 50 yards, five shot groups are or were or have been with this rifle have been awesome. So to describe that, take a quick second, pull one of those shiny nickels out of your pocket. And that's what I'm hitting in five shot groups over and over again at 50 yards. Not my best shot group. This is a consistent over and over type of scenario. Now, to prove that, I know a lot of you guys are asking for 10 shot groups. And I believe that the five shot group gives you a really good sense of how consistent and how nice an air rifle can be. But for this one, I wanted to go ahead and take it to the next step and give you that 10 shot group. Out of the magazine, I was using the new Daystate flip open style magazine. And we all know with a magazine that the accuracy is maybe just a little bit less than with a single shot tray. I haven't found it to be much less, but a little bit. And we always want that nth degree. But with a with the new Daystate magazine 10 shot group, it was 0.5455 inches center to center at 50 yards. Now, if you look at the group, look at the picture, you're going to notice more left and right movement. And, you know, over a 10 shot group, you're going to have breezes that pick up and so forth. And you can really, and that's really what I can attribute that left to right movement to. So given a perfect situation, that group probably would have shrunk a little bit as well. But really, if you're a shooter and you're, you're shooting a match and you miss a shot, you can really attribute that to yourself versus the gun here. Now, the price point is $1,699 for the Walnut uh, standard version. And really at that price point, you cannot ask for a better product, I don't think, especially out of the box, because you're not going to have to take it to the range. You're not going to have to go down and tinker and twist this and twist that to just to get it to just right. It works and it works out of the box. So with that guys, that's the Wolverine R. I'm sure there's more details I've left out. If you have questions, put those comments down below. If you haven't subscribed, hit that button for me, subscribe. And until next time guys, make your trigger pull stay smooth, your pellets fly straight, and we'll see you again next time on the Airgun Advisor.